Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms So in this video tutorial we're going to be taking a look at our very first data structure that is the stack data structure So I'm going to be dividing this topic in two parts that is the first part is going to be all about understanding what exactly stack data structure is So we'll take a theoretical look at what is stack how is the working of stack and the different operations and we'll also take a look at the application and in the second part we'll also implement the stack data structure using c++ programming so the second video would be right after this one wherein we'll actually implement the stack data structure but if you are a beginner it is very important that you understand what happens behind the scenes so not only are we going to take a look at the presentation but we will also use the digital blackboard to see how the stack operations work behind the scenes so make sure you watch this video till the end if you are a beginner it is really important and then the next part as i mentioned would be the implementation part so with that being said let's start off and let's take a little bit of theory on what exactly is a stack data structure so a short theory over here what is stack data structure so a stack is a linear data structure which operates in lifo that is last in first out or filo that is first in last out pattern now do note these two points lifo and filo we'll talk in detail about them as we move ahead when we see the working right now just keep this in mind this is just the basic standard definition but the reason why we call this data structure as a stack data structure is because it behaves like a real world stack so the word stack itself means some objects which are piled on top of each other for example you can see in the image a pile of books you know it's a stack of books which are kept on top of each other so if you want to get the last book you have to first remove off first few of the books right or for example the stack of cards so that's why it's called a stack data structure because it behaves like a stack okay now again it's a abstract data type and we've talked about abstract data type in the previous video i'll link that video in the description but basically it's a logical entity because we will be creating the functions that are basically operations of this stack data structure so it's a abstract data type which has a bounded capacity so a stack data structure has a bounded capacity which means it can store limited number of data elements ultimately data structures are going to store data right but every data structure stores this data differently so the stack data structure stores the data in the form of a stack and of course we are going to see the working as we move ahead so it's a very simple data structure that allows adding and removing elements in a particular order now the order may be lifo and filo so we'll talk more about what exactly lifo and filo means when we actually take the working so one keyword that you also need to remember is this data structure is a linear data structure so there are two different types of data structure for example we have linear and non linear so when it comes to linear the data is accessed and stored in a linear way or in a sequential way in a particular order and when it comes to non linear the data is not stored in that fashion so you'll understand more when we go in detail and when we discuss the other data structures also right now just keep that in mind okay so this was just a little bit of theory and explanation of what exactly is a stack data structure in the theoretical form and we also took a real world example like stack of books stack of cards stack of cds you know but now let's try to understand what exactly a stack would look like when it comes to a digital example that is how it looks like in the digital world or how it looks like in the computer system in the memory okay and we'll also try to understand the different operations okay so as you can see on the digital blackboard what we have here is a computer memory so i have just drawn a basic diagram and this is just visualize this or imagine this as your memory computer ram or whatever storage system you have and you know that memory has memory blocks right so each rectangle here is a memory block with some address let's say this is 1000 and this is 1002 or whatever in sequence you know so every memory block has its address right so in this computer memory we are creating this stack data structure right so this orange rectangular box basically represents our stack okay you can see this right so we have 1 2 3 4 and five memory elements so we have five memory blocks which means that this data structure this stack has a size of five which means it can store five elements okay so i have a separate representation over here so in memory this is how the stack would look like so we have five positions we'll start from the bottom actually so this is 1 2 3 4 5 okay Now coming to our two keywords that is lifo that is last in first out or first in last out okay so stack data structure operates in lifo or filo manner or pattern so we just discussed that so what exactly does this mean so when i say last in first out 
So when we store data in a stack, so let's assume that all of these five blocks are blank right now, you know, and let's say our stack is storing integer data type. So whenever a new data is going to be entered, so it will be at entered at the bottom of the stack. Okay. So just assume that this is a container. Okay. And this is the top of the container. So this is top and this is bottom. Okay. So whenever a data is entered, so let's say we enter five. Okay. So we are storing the number five over here. So it will be entered at the bottom. Okay. Now let's say you store one more value. Let's say you want to store two. So you can see that the numbers are piling up like a stack, right? So we have one, we have 50, we have minus three and so on and so forth. So right now, since our stack size is full, that is, we can only store five numbers. Our stack is basically full. So whenever you enter something, that is whenever you add some values, it goes in this fashion from top to bottom and it is stored at the bottom of the stack, right? And it gets filled up in this order from bo bottom to top. So when it comes to removal, since our stack is something like this, you know, so there is only one way of entry and one way of exit. Okay. Because this is basically closed. Just imagine that this is a container and one end is closed. So everything can be entered in this way. So first in and last out, which means that whatever value goes first. So we know that we stored number five first, right? And then two, then one, then 50 and then minus three. So whatever value we entered first. So this is a position number one, two, three, four and five will be removed last. So that's why first in last out or another way to look at it is last in first out. So we first entered five, then we entered two, then one, then 50 and then minus three. So minus three was the last value which was entered. And after that our stack got full, right? So this is the value which will come out first. So that's why last in first out. So the last value that was inserted in the stack will be the first one to come out. So always remember that there is only one way entry in the stack and it has to be removed in the same way. Okay. So this is how visually you can kind of imagine how stack basically operates in the memory, how stack data structure actually operates. Now let's actually try to understand a few standard operations that you can perform on stack data structure. Okay. So these are the eight different standard stack operations. So the number one is push. So when you say push and the reason why I have added round braces is because when you actually implement this stack data structure in, in the form of a programming language, these are all functions. Okay. So whenever it comes to operations or behavior, we implement them in the form of functions and you'll see that in the next video. But right now just understand that this round brackets basically terms that this is a function. Okay. So the first operation is push. So what push does is place an item onto the stack. If there is no place for new items, stack is in overflow state. Okay. So right now let's understand that again, this is our stack. Okay. Let me use another color. Okay. Blue seems pretty good. So this is our stack, right? We have one, two, three, four and five positions. So if you perform one push operation, so let's say you want to push a number five. Again, our stack is of size five. Okay. And it is an integer data type stack. Okay. Which means that it is just going to store integer values for now. Let's assume that. So let's say you push a value as 50. Okay. So 50 is going to go like this. And since all of them are empty, the 50 is going to be stored at the first location at the very bottom. Okay. So let's assume that you fill out the incomplete stack. I'm just going to fill out random values. Okay. And now when you perform one more push operation after the five push operations, you have to check whether the stack is full or not. And right now you can see it is full. So when the stack is full, it is called as stack overflow or overflow state. So this is the push operation. Basically push operation is just pushing in values inside the stack in this order. The second operation is pop. So the pop operation is return the item at the top of the stack and then remove it. Okay. Which means that you have to remove the topmost item of the stack and erase it. Okay. So when I say pop, this value is gone. If I say pop again, now I'm going to remove six and I have to erase it from the stack. Now, if you do pop five times, all of these values will be erased, right? Removed from the stack. And after that, if you try to pop one more time, it will be an underflow state because the stack is empty. Okay. So these are the two different states, stack overflow state and stack underflow state. So just remember that then there are some other functions or operations. You can say is empty. So is empty is tells if the stack is empty or not. Now, how do you do this in terms of programming? We will keep a count of 
the number of elements inserted okay so you'll understand this when we actually see the program but these are the functions so is empty tells if the stack is empty or not basic enough we have is full which means that it tells if the stack is full or not again you just have to keep a count of how many values are there and equate it with the size okay so if the number of elements in the stack is equal to the size of the stack our stack is full right so that's how you basically implement the logic then we have peak peak is when you want to access the item at i position now you can see that each of this stack has position values 1 2 3 4 5 so when i say peak of 4 i am trying to see what exactly is over here okay peak of 4 means this value peak of 1 would be this peak of 2 would be this now remember right now i am starting the positions from 1 to 5 when it comes to implementation and if you use array the index position would be used and it would start from 0 okay so don't confuse yourself right now since we are just using the theory to represent the positions we are starting from 1 otherwise when it comes to arrays you know that the index position starts from 0 then we have 1 then we have 2 3 and 4 okay so that's how it goes next thing is count which means this operation gets the number of items in the stack so let's say we have 3 41 and 71 so we have three items right the stack size is 5 but these two positions are empty which means that the count of items in the stack is basically 3 so we should get the output as 3 the next function or operation that is stack operation is change so again as the name suggests change the item at i position so if i say change of 1 to 11 and you know the positions are 1 2 3 4 and 5 what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to access this value 71 and i'm changing it to value 11 okay so this is what this operation would do and last is the display operation which is basically display all the items in the stack so you can print all the stack items in any order you know any order you want or you can be like get more creative and say 1 that is the position 1 and the value at position 1 11 2 value at position 2 is 41 3 value at position 3 is 3 something like that you know you can do this printing thing in the programming part anyhow you want so yeah, these were the basic stack operations and these are the things that we are basically going to be implementing in C++ programming language in the next video. So I just thought that you should go through this and I hope you have a very basic idea about how these operations work and what exactly is stack and how you can visualize it in the memory. Now one last thing that is left out is the applications of stack. So let's go ahead with that. So obviously when we are studying any kind of data structure, the question arises that where exactly is that particular data structure used? So some applications of stack data structure is balancing of symbols. Now to understand this, let's take a programming example. Let's say we are programming in C++. So whenever we have a opening curly braces, we always have a closing curly braces, right? So when it comes to balancing, this stack can be used for balancing. For example, whenever there is an opening curly brace, you push that curly brace into a stack. And whenever the closing curly brace is used, again, you pop that out, which means that the net value in the stack is always going to be zero, right? So similar to that, at the end of the program, if there is any kind of extra value left out in the stack, it means that there is some symbol left out, that is some curly braces missed out and there is a syntax error. So this was just a very basic example. Then we have infix to postfix conversion, which is another concept. We have redo and undo features at many places like editors and Photoshop. So remember the last thing that you've done, Sometimes you misplace something and you are like, okay, what was the last thing that I did? I want to undo it. So that last feature or last action that you took is stored in a stack kind of way. Because remember stack operates as last in and first out. So the last operation will be the first that you come back when you click undo, right? So that's how redo and undo features are also implemented. We have forward and backward features also in web browsers, which work in kind of a stack way. And then there are many other algorithms also. So you can read through them. One more example would be your cache memory, right? Sometimes the last thing that you've loaded into a web browser loads much faster, right? Because it is just accessible immediately and it works in a kind of stack oriented way, which means that it is easily accessible, which comes out very first. So that's how some memory systems also work. Okay, so this was a complete theoretical aspect of stack data structure. I hope you've got an understanding of what exactly is a stack data structure, how does it look, what are the different operations in stack data structure, and some of the applications. In the next video, we'll try to implement the stack data structure in C++. And if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, make sure you subscribe, and 
Don't forget to turn on the notifications because in the next video, as I mentioned, we'll implement the stack data structure in C++ programming. So thanks for watching guys. See you guys in the next one. Peace.